Hey guys, now today we're going to be having a look at a new version of a product that will be of interest to you if you ever owned one of these bad boys back in your younger days. Now this is of course the very famous Commodore Amiga 500, uh, definitely one of the more popular home computers of the late 80s and early 90s. In fact, I go as far to say, particularly here in the UK, the most popular home computer of the era. Everyone I went to school with had either an Amiga 500 or an A600 or an A1200, and maybe you did as well, and you kind of get into that stage now where you're thinking, I really wouldn't mind playing some of those old Amiga games or software titles again, but maybe you haven't got access to the original hardware anymore. You know, you might have sold your old Amigas, like, back in the mid-90s, or maybe you don't want to pay the extortionate prices that they go for on eBay these days. You might even have a wife or a girlfriend who is a bit fussy about you having 20 or 30 year old bits of hardware hanging around your house, which, you know, I can completely relate to that. Well, there is a solution that is really tidy and really simple to use, and it is Amiga Forever. Now, if you're not familiar with Amiga Forever, it's actually been around for uh, a good, what, about 10, 15 years now, I think, actually. Uh, a new version of it comes out every year or two, and Amiga Forever 2016 has actually got some quite big upgrades to it. Now, to quickly summarize what it is, it's a uh, either a CD-ROM or a download package that includes emulators for pretty much every configuration of the Amiga from like the low-end Amiga 500, right up until stuff like the Amiga 4000T and uh, PowerPC upgrades have now been added to it as well. So you can emulate the Amiga in all its forms pretty much. So whether that be, you know, an Amiga 500 playing games like Cannon Fodder and Lemmings, or if you want to try out the latest version of Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition. As that is actually one of the big new upgrades in Amiga Forever 2016. It now includes PowerPC emulation that lets you try out the latest version of OS 4. For the first time, you can now run it on a bog standard PC. And, you know, before you had to pay something like, you know, £2,000 for an Amiga 1X1000 board to even, you know, try it. So that is definitely a really big upgrade in Amiga Forever 2016. Now, it's actually based on the WinUAE emulation platform, which you can download for free. The thing is, if you're not really familiar with how the Amiga works and setting it up, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass to get going. And, you know, you can be banging your head against a brick wall. With Amiga Forever, you literally run the installer and then everything's point and click. Everything's set up for you it even comes with games and demos included and all the Amiga kickstart ROMs and everything which are actually still under copyright so if you want to do it legally Amiga Forever is one of the few ways that you can do it and literally it just takes all the hassle and stress out of setting up an emulation environment for the Amiga so what we'll do now is we'll hop onto the PC and we'll have a quick look at the newest version of Amiga Forever now when you first install and set up Amiga Forever 2016 you are greeted by this admittedly quite unexciting looking screen. <laughs> However, uh, don't be fooled by its simplicity. There is actually a lot of power locked away under here and it's all kind of user configurable as well so anything that you want to tweak or change it's really simple to do all that. Now you get dropped into this little tab here called Systems and if you look down here what we've got is a list of all the models of the Amiga. Uh, ranging from the very first one that came out back in 1985, the Amiga 1000, which uh, you can just double click. And what it will do then is it will open the emulated machine in its own window. Now you might be able to hear some uh, floppy disk loading sounds going on there. And the reason for that is all of the floppy based systems have kind of virtual floppy sounds emulated in Amiga Forever, which is turned on by default. Now I will just say, you can disable that because if anything like me, you know, it's a bit of novelty for a couple of seconds, but you know, it does get annoying pretty fast. But as you can see here, we've got the Amiga's Workbench version 1.1 1 .1, uh, that came out back in 1985. So, you know, you can double click that and use it like any Amiga Workbench would be on a real system. Now, I can demo something quickly to you here. So if we open the clock, there you go, I'll just enlarge that a little bit, which was uh, a demo that came with a machine. Now, if we hold down the escape button on the keyboard, that will then give me control of the PC's mouse cursor back. And I can show you around the edge of the window here, we've got a few options. So for example, we can uh, click on the pause button. And as you see, then the, uh, the second hand on the clock is paused. We can resume that as well. So if you want to take any snapshots of games or whatever, that's really straightforward to do. There's a stop button to close the virtual emulated machine, uh, reboot there, uh, take a snapshot or a screen grab there. 
So, you know, you can take pictures and grabs of your favorite games and videos. Uh, this control here lets you control the size of the window. So we can do it one times, which makes it a bit smaller and a bit less blocky. Uh, two times that we had it on then, or you can even make it full screen as well. Now, I will say on the monitor that I'm using here, we're using a 27-inch uh, 1080p monitor. So the original Amiga's video resolution is really upscaled and it looks quite blocky on here. I mean, ideally, you'd want to run it on a 4 4 by 3 screen or uh, maybe even like, you know, an old school um, SVGA CRT for that really authentic feel. Uh, but there you go. So that's, you know, a really basic look at the Amiga's workbench running under emulation here. Now, if we close that down, I imagine most people are going to be interested in running games on this. So what we'll do is we'll uh, launch up an Amiga 500. Right, so we'll load up an Amiga 500. What I'll do quickly while it's starting is I'll just pause the machine after I've double clicked on it because by default, these have all got the Amiga workbench disks inserted. So I can click on eject here. Now down the bottom of the window, we have some hardware options and the one on the end is inserting a floppy disk into the main disk drive. Now, for the sake of argument, we'll just assume that obviously, you know, you do own the original of all of these games that you've downloaded off the internet and you've just got them as backup like I have. And uh, we'll insert a game quickly from my collection here now. I'll pick one that I know loads really quickly. Um, let's try Classic Gods. That was always a great game on the Amiga. And uh, we'll just restart the machine quickly here. And it should then boot from the the Gods disk. Actually, we'll just reinsert that again. There we go. <laughs> We get a good old school crack throw there. And while the game's loading up, I'll hold down escape again and that will give me the mouse back. And there are also some more options for controllers down the bottom here as well. As obviously, you know, back in the old days, no one really played Amiga games with a keyboard. It was generally always a joystick or a, a joypad. So what we can do is we've got the mouse inserted into the virtual port zero. Into port one, I'm going to play this game using a joystick. So we get to choose what we want to emulate here. You know, joystick, a gamepad or a CD32 controller. I'm going to emulate a standard Amiga joystick and then we'll use an Xbox One controller that I've got inserted into my uh, PC's USB port. And we'll make this full screen and then we should be able to play Gods using an Xbox One controller. And there we go. As you can see, it works really well. Pick up the sword. And if you wanted to be even more authentic, you could play using something like this, the Competition Pro USB joystick that came out a couple of years ago. Now, obviously, the Amiga wasn't only about gaming, and there are some really nice, fully installed versions of the Amiga's operating system, all set up ready to go on here as well, uh, based on hard disk systems. So if I double click on 1.3, that will launch me into a uh, preset up version of the Amiga's classic workbench 1.3 that was distributed with the uh, Amiga 500 and uh, the 2000 and the uh, 1000. And as you can see here, if I double click it, it's got all of the uh, programs pre-installed on it. So we'll go into the, uh, the demo that everybody launches when they open the Amiga's workbench. Hello, YouTube. I won't make it swear in this video. Uh, but as you can see, you know, it's basically like, like using 1.3 on a hard disk based system and they also include some of the more advanced Amiga workbench environments like here we've got 3.x which is kind of based on the 3.9 release of the Amiga's workbench I think that's a change of name for copyright reasons and this is a um, later Amiga environment that's kind of been configured by Cloanto to include lots of preset programs like we've got um, you know TurboTex a text editor we've got stuff like uh, ppaint which was one of the Amiga's more famous bitmap paint packages, so we'll add up the, uh, the clown picture there. You might remember seeing that in a lot of the Amiga magazines back then. And we also got AWeb, you know, should you want to surf the web on an Amiga, you can do it. So you can kind of track the Amiga's operating system evolution from the very first Amiga up to, you know, some of the latest ones. Now there are actually some third party um, Amiga configurations included, for example, um, Ami Kit. Now if you're not familiar with this, it's basically a pre-configured Amiga Workbench 3.1 with loads of third-party additions and also a really sexy environment that's based on um, Directory Opus version 5 at Magellan. So bear in mind this is actually based on the Amiga's Workbench that came out back in 
1994. We're talking Amiga Workbench 3.1. So if I just quickly restart, here we go. So it's, we see the loading screen here. And it actually looks like a really modern operating system. They've done a really good job with this. And these are all basically set to just double click and go. They download all of the uh, the latest versions of it. So uh, I'll just come out of here quickly. As you can see, we've got stuff like uh, an FTP client here, which will connect to Aminet, the Amiga's famous software repository. And it's got stuff like, you know, start menu configured with loads of applications pre-installed, directory Opus 4. Uh, there's even a uh, quite a modern CSS web browser here, um, NetSurf it's called. So if you're a bit crazy and you want to surf the web in an Amiga Workbench setting, then you know you, it's possible to do that. And it actually runs at a pretty decent speed on a high-end PC. And we've got stuff like uh, WikiChat, which is a IRC client, so we can connect to um, one of the more famous Amiga IRC networks, Amiga World and chat away in here and the good thing about it is it all comes pre-configured so the networking and everything's all set up so it's literally a ca case of you know point and click and you're in and another one is Ami Sys, which again is similar to Ami Kit however this has a bit more of a uh, authentic Amiga feel to this the icons and the uh, the workbench are actually you know they feel a bit more like using an actual Amiga than the very next generation feel to Ami Kit and again, it comes pre-configured with loads of software. And again, you have the start menu and there's web browsers and all that kind of thing installed here as well. I won't spend too much time going over them all, but, you know, it is uh, really useful and it gives you a good overview of the kind of current Amiga scene. And uh, the one that a lot of people will be interested in having a look at then is Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition. Now, Cloanto actually include a Amiga 4000 PowerPC setup. So what you can do is basically clone that and then install Amiga OS 4.1, so I'll quickly show you how it runs on this emulated system here, so we'll double click it. And since about last year, WinUAE, the platform that this is based on, now does emulate the classic Amiga uh, PowerPC accelerator, so that means you can run Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition Classic under emulation, which is uh, definitely a first. Now, obviously you do have to own Amiga Forever 4.1 Final Edition, which is quite cheap. I think it's only about I think it's about like 25 pounds or 30 euros you can buy it for. And I will actually do a separate video on configuring and setting up Amiga OS 4.1 Final Edition because I've seen the forums a lot of people are having lots of problems setting up the uh, the files and making it work properly. So I'll do a separate video on how to uh, install it if you're interested. But I thought I'd just quickly give you a look at, you know, what it looks like running under emulation. So we'll give it a second to load up here. And there it is, Amiga OS 4.1 running under emulation on Amiga Forever 2016. So we can double click there and see, you know, all the workbench files are included. And uh, if we run something like um, Ranger, for example, that should give me a uh, little look at the configuration of this emulated machine. There we go, so it thinks it's running on a Cyberstorm PowerPC with a, uh, a 603 proce a 604 processor. So, uh, and the graphics boards, it's running on an emulated Picasso 4. So even the fact that you can now actually just try out, you know, Amiga OS 4.1 on any PC is pretty cool. Obviously, you've got a lot of restrictions with this running on a classic machine. It's not going to outperform, you know, something like an Amiga X1000, but, you know, it does let you try it out at least. Now, there are various different versions of Amiga Forever available, either in physical format or on download. Now, the one I've got here is Amiga Forever Plus, which actually comes bundled with some classic Amiga software. As, uh, as you can see here, we're in the Games tab. And if you scroll down, a lot of these are public domain and shareware games from uh, back in the early 90s and late 80s. Um, stuff like uh, Mega Ball, that was one of my favourite kind of Arkanoid clones that's included here. But also there are a few old Amiga commercial titles that they've had permission to bundle as well, like for example Kickoff 2, that was a very famous classic Amiga football game. Uh, there are also some demos here as well, if you want to get a flavour of what the Amiga's demo scene was like, some of the famous ones like, you know, Enigma, and also we've got, you know, Nine Fingers Spaceballs included here too, and a few of the more obscure ones are bundled with Amiga Forever as well. Uh, in the gallery section, there are stuff that will interest you if you've got uh, any kind of interest in the Amiga beyond just playing the games. For example, we can have a look at the um, the inside of the Amiga's 1000 case, which had some uh, signatures from the original Amiga designers there. There's stuff like the Amiga's original patents that you can look at as a PDF format. And also, if you do get Amiga Forever on the physical format, on the DVDs, it's definitely worth getting those if you really you know, have got an interest in the history of the Amiga itself. For example, it comes with a launch of the Amiga 
documentary so you can have a look at the original Amiga's launch. It's like an hour long this uh, footage from back in 1985 in New York. There's also a tour of Commodore business machines, their HQ in 1988. There's the uh, Dave Haney um, deathbed vigil video when he took a camera around and filmed the final day of Commodore in 1994 when they went bankrupt. Uh, there are also you know, interviews with the Amiga's designers, some more recent stuff in there as well. So, you know, if you've got an interest in the Amiga, you know, scratching below the surface, it's definitely worth getting hold of the DVDs. It comes with two DVDs that you can play in a standard DVD player or launch it from this um, player interface here. And also, Cloanto do publish an 8-bit Commodore emulator called C64 Forever. And for the first time, it actually kind of ties it all together. As you can see, I've got C64 Forever installed here as well. If you have both of them, you can access you know all of the systems from this one player interface, which is really handy. So I double-click that and it will launch into the uh, Commodore 8-bit environment that will open C64 Forever. There you go, that classic blue screen. So there you go, that's been a quick look at Amiga Forever 2016. Hopefully it's explained a little bit about what the software does and shows you just how easy it is to get up and running. And you know, if you've got any interest in reliving your Amiga days without all the headache of setting everything up manually, definitely worth a buy. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'll do a quick setup guide if you want to run Amiga OS 4.1, as I know some people are having problems. Look out for that video coming in the next uh, day or two. And any questions, as always, leave them in the video comments box. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.